Stanford fans. Oh my goodness. That's hilarious. Penny, you made it here before me. <laughs> I Technically, I made it here before anybody last week, right? <laughs> Um, it's so nice to see you guys live again. I let me tell you, I did not enjoy last week at all. I'd rather be live with you. <laughs> so, hello, Stanford fans. Welcome to another Make It Monday broadcast. I am Nan Gerlitz, independent Stampin' Up demonstrator from Bloomington, Illinois, and I am here live usually on my uh, YouTube channel every Monday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. So, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're joining me here. Um, and if you're a replay warrior and you're watching this on replay, welcome as well. Be sure to leave a comment. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments or you can message me or email me. Um, I'm happy to help you because that's why I'm here. So last week I was not live because it was Labor Day holiday here in the United States. And so we had our daughter and son-in-law and the kids over. We were swimming, we were grilling, we were doing all the things. Um, turns out I probably could have been live, but my gosh, we were so exhausted by that time. It was just just as well that I didn't do that. So um, but I did pre-record the video last week, so y'all would have something to watch. And let me tell you, it's nerve-wracking to pre-record a video because I don't do editing. I like going live because, hey, this is just me and that's what you get. <laughs> Um, and that was one of the reasons why I always wanted to do these live videos to start with is because I kind of am more of a in-person, let's just experiencing, experience me kind of demonstrator. So <laughs> I think you're getting a better deal this way. So anyway, uh, tonight I have for you um, this fun little card, which is definitely out of my wheelhouse. <laughs> and this is actually the one I made for Friday night stamping this past weekend. And uh, I was playing around with color combinations and I'm like, that'll be cool. And yeah, I'll grab the vintage Christmas set because it's more vintagey looking card. And I kept joking as I was making it that like, it looks like my grandmother's wallpaper or something. <laughs> and I, I joke, I do like the card. I like how it turned out, but it's just not usually my style. So I was a little uncomfortable making it at points. <laughs> but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway, because you know what? My style is not always your style, right? And your style is not always my style. So let's have some fun and do something different. All right. So let me switch the view here and we shall get started. Okay, as always, I have put a um, link to a full supply list and cardstock measurements in the video description so you don't have to worry about frantically writing anything down while you're on here. You can just enjoy and um, roll your eyes at me if you'd like. <laughs> I can't see. And then uh, you can click on that later to find out the exact measurements I was talking about and which supplies I was using. So, um, okay, with that, I'll show you what we're going to use tonight. We are using the vintage Christmas set, which is from our um, current mini catalog. This is a fun little stamp set. It is does coordinate with the vintage bottle punch for this bottle, um, which is also available in a bundle with the bottled happiness stamp set, which I also love. Um, and then a variety of other fun holiday images. But obviously you can use these for... Um, not just Christmas time, guys. You can use it all year long. Um, okay, so we'll be using that. We'll be using four different ink pads tonight. We're starting with Early Espresso, Cherry Cobbler, Shaded Spruce, and So Saffron. So a definite kind of vintagey, subdued color combo, um, which I totally like, actually. So... And the reason for this, actually the, uh, the inspiration for it is because all this week on my Facebook page, I will be featuring combinations that go with the early espresso. Uh, so let me tell you here, if you're not following me on Facebook yet, you can find me here, facebook.com slash Stampernan. I am Stampernan pretty much everywhere on the internet. So in case you're looking for me, if I'm there, that'll be how you find me. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so tonight we're doing this color combination with Early Espresso. 
All this week on Facebook, I will be featuring other color combinations with the early espresso. So if it's a color you have trouble with, or if you're just looking for new color combinations, or if you're just curious what I'm going to be up to, hop on over to Facebook, give me a follow, and enjoy. All right, for cardstock tonight, we are starting with a base of Cherry Cobbler. Um, and this is standard eight and a half by five and a half inches scored at four and a quarter. Let's go ahead and give that a good burnish with the bone folder. So really cute. While the kids were over on Monday, um, Jeffrey wanted to stamp and James came down to stamp some too. He's a little less interested than his brother, but um, still had some fun. But then Kylie had her paper pumpkin kit out and was making actual cards and Jeffrey wanted to make a card. So I got one of my kits out and then I showed him the bone folder trick. And I said, I always do it on both sides. And so then James came back down and the bone folder was laying out on the table. And he says, what's that? So I told him and then Jeffrey grabbed it and said, this is what you do, Jamesy. And you have to do this. And grandma likes to do it on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a very good listener. <laughs> All right. Then next we've got a layer of so saffron that is five and a quarter by four inches. We've got a, um, oh, a little strip of early espresso, of course. And this is five and a quarter by one and a half. We've got some basic white. This one's five and a quarter by four. That'll be for the inside of our card. We've got another piece of basic white that is four inches by two and a half inches. And then a tiny piece that is one and three quarter inches by one inch. It is a great lesson to remember. <laughs> he's so funny. He's just, he's such a good listener. He's just really picks up on all those details. So be careful what you say to him because he will remember. <laughs> so if you promise something, boy, you're going to have to deliver because he's not going to forget it. Um, also for inks, we will be using the Cherry Cobbler Stampin' Blends, um, and that's just a tiny, tiny bit of coloring that I added in. And since I was already using Cherry Cobbler, we went with Cherry Cobbler. So we will be using the Vintage Bottle Punch that I mentioned earlier. We will also be using the Very Best Trio, um, trio punch, <laughs> the very best trio punch. Um, we will be using this little doodly doodly here um, to make that cool sentiment layer because I was stuck for a sentiment how to do that and it, nothing was coming to me. So I discovered a little something cool and I hope you'll like it. We'll also be using some dimensionals and two of our blending brushes. These do come in a three pack. Um, so, you know, you'll, if you get them, you'll have to at least to use. You've noticed that I have labeled mine and I just keep them in kind of a color family. So I've got reds, yellows, greens, blues. I've got brown and black together. No big deal. Um, uh, so I just have two packs of them. I have six brushes and that's all I've needed so far. So easy peasy. And then a little wink of Stella brush. And I'll show you here. Just on this side of the card, you'll see all the little shimmery because I wanted to make it look like a bottle and I was going to um, emboss it with clear embossing powder. And then the stamper man suggested Wink of Stella. And I think by that time I was kind of tired and I went, yeah, that sounds easier. <laughs> so either way it would work. So we went the easy route on that. And that's it. We're not using any die cuts tonight. Um, anything like that. So got a couple of punches to make up for it. So let's get started. Um, also wanted to let you know, any of the products I show you here can be purchased in my online store and you can find that at bit.ly slash Stanford InShop. Okay, so we will start now. When you get your photopolymer stamps, these clear ones, they actually come kind of on a, a hard backing plastic. Um, and then the images are printed on the label behind the case here. So I take them off that hard when I put them on, but then I do keep this more flexible little film over them, um, partly because we have two dogs. 
who love to share their hair with everybody. <laughs> I'm sure that I am not alone here when I say that. I'm sure a lot of you have fur babies of some sort. So this kind of keeps the hairs off of the stamps for one thing. And I feel like it protects them from other things too. So we'll just pull that off. We'll be using our jar. We'll be using our flowers. We'll be using our flower centers. We will be using our little sprigs of whatever, <laughs> leaves and stuff. And our little uh, evergreen with the holly berries and a little very Merry Christmas to you. I think that's it. So all but three stamps in here we're going to be using. Hopefully I've got everything I need over here. That was another issue with pre-recording the video because when I forget something behind me over on my craft station, I just run over there and I'm talking to you while I'm going over there. Well, while I was pre-recording a video for last week, it felt very awkward to go get something I forgot. So I actually started a video and then started it again because I didn't want to have to edit it. So <laughs> says, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am that lazy. <laughs> Like, no, I don't want to figure out how to stitch things together or anything. I just want to shoot this video start to finish, just like you were in front of me. Okay, so we're going to start. Oh, I should always start with my inside piece, right? Because that's what I do. Let's get that out of the way. I think I, yes. We're going to use that tiny little sprig of pine with the holly berries. I'm guessing that's what it is. Um, and we are going to stamp that in our shaded spruce. So this color combination actually came to me from Stampin' Up. Um, as a demonstrator, I have access to some fun uh, exclusive stuff like the color coach that they come out with. So like every year when they add five new in colors, they give us um, more. They give us a color coach for those five in colors as well so that we have some color combination suggestions. So that's what I did first. It's conveniently right here on this hook. So I've printed all mine off and I went to my early espresso. And the very first color combination was early espresso, cherry cobbler, and so saffron. So I grabbed those and then I just really needed a green for the all the greenery. So I'm like, shaded spruce will be good. So I threw that in there. All right, then I'm gonna take my cherry cobbler. I think I'm gonna take the light one and I'm just gonna color in those holly berries. So there's no shading, there's no, any, I mean, it's literally just dots. So, boom, all pretty. And we'll grab our Stampin' Seal. So once again, stamp and seal is a very good adhesive. You do not need a lot of adhesive. I just did top and bottom. You really just need like four corners maybe. Um, top and bottom is just easier for me. Straight shot, boom, we're done. Okay, so there is the center. That's done. Now let's take our um, Oh, and you know what? I do need another little piece. So see, I can just walk over here. Now I have my little basket of goodies that I keep at my stamping station. All the little cutoffs and things like that. I forgot that I need an extra little piece because I punched out that jar. So we need to stamp that on a separate piece of white. So just one big enough for the jar, that's all. <laughs> Oops, picked up an extra stamp there. And always when you're stamping something that you're gonna punch out, you wanna pay attention to the orientation of the punch. So the neck of the bottle is up top. I'm gonna slip it in that way. So I definitely want the bottom of that bottle to be close to the bottom of the cardstock. I wouldn't wanna stamp it way up here because then even if I put my punch like all the way in, you know, it's not gonna get up there. So you want that closer to the bottom so that you can line it up. All right, get these out of my way so I don't have ink all over myself. Cause that happens a lot. 
I had ink up in my all up in my arms the other day. So <laughs> it happens. So another thing I love about our punches is when you put that in, you can really you can use them upside down like this. So I can get a good idea of the outline there. I'm just squeezing it slightly so it won't move or anything. And then I can scooch it around a little bit if I decide I want a little bit more around. I don't usually get too fussy with them, but voila, no fussy cutting involved. See, and I have cherry cobbler on my fingertip. <laughs> Even with the precautions, guys. All right, let me... That one got some ink on it, so I want to make sure it's out of the way. Okay, now we can stamp here. So what I did was I put the punched bottle down so I knew about where my flowers needed to be. Not a big deal, just guessing. So, and I have discovered through some trial and error, the best way to line these guys up is with that big flower towards the bottom. So this, these are gonna be in saffron. Anybody got that song in their head? Anybody as old as I am? I know somebody here is. <laughs> I know a couple of people might know what I'm talking about. Um, so now before I stamp this, I'm going to move that bottle out of the way, but I just wanted to get a general idea of where I needed to be. So we'll stamp those flowers, and they look really odd without their centers, I'll tell you that. Um, Okay, and then we have this guy, and I gotta clean it off because I got some cobbler on it. You're a quiet bunch tonight. All right, so um, the other thing actually that I found that was super helpful because this particular stamp, kind of hard to see here I know without ink, but these three parts are the flower centers. And then you've got three pine cones there. So instead of putting it on the block and then trying to line it up, what I have found is easier is lining those flower centers up before there's any ink on them. Thank you, Penny. I'm so mad about saffron. Saffron's mad about me. I can't use this color without singing that in my head. So I've got those lined up there. Now when I pick it up with my block, I can make sure my block is straight. And that helps me line that up better. So we'll get our early espresso out, the star of the show. And I have noticed that these don't line up necessarily perfectly. So don't worry if that happens. Wow, that's a really good shot though. <laughs> um, so it is supposed to be just kind of, you know, loosey goosey, very chill, very vintage. <laughs> okay, now we need our um, leaves, our greenery. And once again, I'm going to do that same thing. And these are going to go off the paper, and that's fine. So, what I have found is the stems of these guys kind of tuck in around those flowers. So if you just kind of get that generally lined up, I need to find a block because I'm using all of them. <laughs> I'm using a lot of stamps tonight. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna pick it up this way. I just wanna make sure that the, it's, it's kind of straight so I get a good shot at lining those up once I've inked it up. Because it is harder to, um, it's not as easy to see through them when there's ink on them, obviously. Yeah, there we go. So that looks right, it looks purposeful. <laughs> so this is one thing I found with this stamp set because it is kind of a lot of little pieces that should, they don't, they don't fit together in a very obvious way, like when you first just look at it. 
you just have to mess around with it a little bit and then go, oh, those tuck in there. Got it. Okay. So um, I also felt like that just wasn't quite enough because if I put the bottle on, it just seemed like it was kind of all up there, like it had a mohawk. <laughs> so then I took my little sprig of uh, pine and I just tucked it in here by this flower to give it a little bit more zhuzh. Zhuzh it up. And of course we had to have our cherry cobbler blend and fill in our little berries. Okay. We can go ahead and use our Wink Stella. So I always shake mine up. I don't know if you have to after you start it. When you first get the Wink of Stella, there is actually a black ring right here. Um, it's kind of like a washer, if you know anything about construction. <laughs> it's just a spacer. So that'll be in there, and you have to unscrew this and take that black ring off. And then it kind of pokes in and will release the, um, the glittery goodness, <laughs> which I think you probably never heard me say. But Wink of Stella is an approved form of quote-unquote glitter in our house, so... So I literally just painted it right up the side of this bottle and up the side of the neck. And that was it. And I love how when you, when you look at it sideways, you can catch all the shimmer. But when you look at it straight on, it's kind of a shadow effect. It's really cool. So no matter which angle you're at, you're good. All right, let's get some of these ink pads out of the way before I'm wearing my ink all over. Just one of the many reasons I shampoo my hair every day is to get the ink off my hands. <laughs> all right, a little bit of Stampin' Seal here. Normally I would put that up on um, dimensionals a lot of times, but for this one, I liked it flat against the flowers. So there you go. Uh, and I did forget to do one thing before I did that. So let's see if I can pull that off. Be very gentle because there we go. Whisper white cardstock is not always that forgiving. I forgot to do all my sponge work, guys. So let's do a little bit of stamping on our saffron layer. And then we will do all of our sponging. And it will be glorious. <laughs> Bring in another little piece here. Okay, so we've got our saffron. Let's clean off our little evergreen sprig. Because when I started to put this card together, it was looking too plain. So I kind of, this is what reminded me of like grandma's wallpaper was what I'm about to do here. I basically made my own designer series paper. So what, when you're doing this, what I have found is best, this is a hint I picked up decades ago, is always move the cardstock, not your stamp. That way your stamp is always in a different direction when you're going to the paper, but it's much easier than trying to move your block all the time. I also work in kind of triangles. So as you can see, I'm kind of filling in between two each time. So here's a couple, so I want one there. There's a couple, I want one in the middle. You wanna stamp off the cardstock as well. Now I gotta fill in this side. So we'll go in between these guys, in between them, triangle over there. So I'm literally just kind of seeing triangles as I go. And I think I want one more coming off the edge. And there we go. We've got our own designer series paper. It was so fast to do, just tone on tone, just saffron ink on saffron cardstock. And we're good. So I could totally leave this card like that, but I just wanted to vintage it right up apparently. So we're gonna sponge. So I actually used, there it is. <laughs> on, the, uh, on the white piece, I used the saffron ink, so get this in camera so you can see I kind of pounce on mine and then I go to the paper and go okay that's pretty good I don't want it to be really heavy so I'm starting off the cardstock 
and just kind of catching the edge. I just want to soften the edge. Just a little tap, tap, tap. And always remember you can add more ink, but it's very, very hard to take it away. The easiest way to take it away is to uh, scrap that and start over. So always start with less. <laughs> to clean these, um, you just rub them on the paper or I, I have a microfiber cloth, but it's way back there. So um, I will definitely rub these on the microfiber cloth before I put them away and then they're ready to go, which is why I just kind of kept one for yellow, one for browns and whatnot. All right, then actually the saffron layer, I went with the early espresso because I didn't want just a little bit of a darker layer. I wanted that kind of vintagey feel. So once again, we're just gonna tap, tap off a little bit, start off the cardstock and work our way in. Get a nice little bicep workout here. I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> I am not your fitness guru. I am your creative coach. <laughs> don't take fitness tips from me. And there we go. So see, you have that definite, let me get it closer here. It's just that little hint of age around the edges, basically. Just kind of softens it. All righty, now I can assemble. <laughs> I can't believe I almost forgot to sponge everything. All right, we're gonna assemble everything, get it all out of the way, and then I'll show you. <laughs> That's my favorite kind of workout. That and die cutting, right? Way to crank that wheel on the big boss. <laughs> oh, while eating M&Ms. <laughs> all right, um, yeah, I'm gonna assemble everything and then I'll show you how I did that cool little um, sentiment layer. So we've got that, we've got our little strip of early espresso. I absolutely love this color, but I wish it was called dark chocolate or something because I don't I'm not a coffee drinker. <laughs> but of course, dark chocolate is not alliterative, and we all know they have to be alliterative, right? So, so this one is just gonna run, whoops. I need to trim that down because I made it too long. I may have five and a half in my head instead of five and a quarter. So, let's see. Boom. Easy peasy. Okay. So this is going to run, as I was saying, just from the top to the bottom of the saffron layer. This guy's gonna go up on dimensionals now, just for a little oomph, a little oomph. <laughs> that was my take to pick. I've gotten so spoiled with my take your pick tool, taking these guys off, it's so much easier. Okay, a little bit right there. Now we can put our bottle back on. Okay, now let me show you the cool little trick with the sentiment. Okay, we will stamp it first in our cherry cobbler, which just makes me hungry all the time. <laughs> that sounds yummy. <laughs> 
Okay. So, even though it's see-through, I do kind of, I like lining it up on the grid paper. So I know it's straight and then I can line up my cardstock on the grid paper and I have a pretty good chance of getting everything straight. Oh, so this was something else that was funny last week. Nice. When I uh, was pre-recording video, uh, it's actually different. I had to raise my camera up um, probably four inches um, in order for it to get the full frame like it does when I'm live. So it's just different software, probably. Who knows? Um, I don't know. I just know it works. <laughs> um but I had to raise it up so far. And then if you watched my video from last week, you you know, you saw the top of my head because I had to get down there to line up those squirrels. <laughs> but now it's like I can get right over my image and I'm over the top of my camera. So I'm not in anybody's way. It's nice. So if they renamed early espresso with some chocolate word, then you'd really be hungry. Yes. And I will tell you, cherry is like the only fruit I like in the chocolate. So cherry cobbler and like a dark chocolate, I would be, I would be in trouble. You're right. <laughs> I'd be a hungry little stamper. Okay. So hmm, I also need a post-it note. I often have some very cool post-it notes that are black from a friend of mine. Thank you, Penny. Um, and no, they're not gone yet because I use them sparingly <laughs> because I love them. So this is another, uh, I showed you this for die cutting or punching or whatever. Yeah, just punching. But this was too small to really keep a handle on and stick in here to, to punch. So I needed a handle. So you just stick it to a post-it note and then you can get it in there. So what I'm going to do, is that the right way? Yes. No, this side. So, <laughs> now I need it up here. So that's just my little handle so I can get it all the way in. And I will punch. So now we have this cool little thing, right? So when you flip it over, it'll punch the same way on the other side now. And now I have this cool point to my um, I can't think of, of things to say. This cool point to my sentiment layer is what I'm trying to say. Woo! Words just completely went out of my head, guys. It's a Monday. Okay. And then again, I'm gonna flip this one over and punch that last side. And there we go. Now I will say that it looks like I put one side in a little farther than the other. So I'm just going to trim off that little point because I want them to be even. And these things always remind me of those little um, photo corners that, you know, my, uh, my mom used in her old photo books. So if you want to be really crazy and save those and stick them to the edge of your photos, be my guest. <laughs> yeah, it, this shape really turned out pretty fun. I was very excited about it because when I first had it, I had it just as a strip or an oval or something, and it would just was kind of getting lost, and I don't know. So, um, yeah, so I only need a little bit of adhesive on this side because the other side's going to hang off the edge. And I want to make sure that that um, point is overlapping the bottle so you really get to see that point. And then it's overlapping the saffron over here. So I didn't want the edges just white on white. I wanted to be able to see those points since I went to all the trouble of making that cool little shape. <laughs> so definitely play around with your punches and see what other kinds of things you can do with them because that is a neat little trick. And definitely not something that um, 
you look at that punch and go, oh yeah, that would totally do that. But the smaller you get on the piece that you're punching, you know, the closer together those shapes are gonna be. So lots of fun little things you can do. So as a little treat, I do have an alternative for you using the same layout um, and also early espresso, but with a different color combination as well. So bonus for you guys. Um, this is using the cottage wreaths, cottage wreaths, cottage wreath. I'm not sure if it's plural or not, but anyway, the cottage wreath bundle, which is one of the bundles we'll be using on October 1st, which is World Card Making Day. So Stampin' Up's having a free event um, on October 1st, virtual event. It, you can go to my website and just uh, click on the little banner and see all about it there. Um, but Cottage Wreath is one of the bundles that they will be using to demonstrate with, and we can stamp right along with them if we want. So that's what I pulled out to, um, to do this fun little thing. So you can see exact same layout. I swapped out uh, uh, the Cherry Cobbler for Poppy Parade, so a brighter red. I swapped out the So Saffron for Pool Party. And let me tell you, I love Pool Party and Poppy Parade or Real Red. I love that light blue with a bright red. Such a fun, uh, pretty combo. And then the Early Espresso. And I did not sponge anything. I did do the tone-on-tone -tone stamping still um, and just left it at that. And then the, the sentiment is obviously right on there instead of as a separate piece. Thank you, Penny. Yeah, I really did. I mean, that's that'll show you right there the difference in a more vintagey vintagey card and then a clean and crisp card. So whatever your style is, you know, like this layout would work, these stamps would work, all sorts of things. I mean, so yeah, you can get a lot of use out of your stamps there. Um, let me switch my view here so I can talk to you all again. And I feel like there was one thing. Oh yes did want to remind you when you're on my online store, you can click on the specials tab to see the September weekly deals. So that is a new thing that we're doing this month only. So every Thursday, they come out with a new set of weekly deals. Um, so right now, uh, they've got some great papers and memories and more packs. They've got some cool little adhesive flowers, all some gorgeous, um, soft succulent ribbon, mm, like satiny, really pretty. Um, so lots of different things on the weekly deals right now. And then on Thursday, those will switch out to a new set of weekly deals. So definitely always check those out throughout the month of September. So you can catch on on some savings. I always like to save you guys money. So that is, I think, all I have for you today. So if you found out some new tricks and tips, uh, if you found some value in this video, I would love it if you would subscribe if you haven't already. And also if you would share it with your friends or just share it to your Facebook feed or wherever you share on socials so that your friends can get some of that good information too. All right, so that's it for me. Um, till next Monday, I'm still Van Gerlitz. Happy stamping.